cool. So, another day, another thing on Twitter to respond to. So, uh, first things first, uh, for those of you who have seen my old account resurge and you thought I was gone, uh, no, Insanity is Free has been here the whole time and will continue to be here even when they ban him again, whoever that guy is, you know? Because uh, it's clearly not Jeremiah EXE. It's not like, you know, I refuse to be censored and I won't be shut up. And it's not like the reason that I know for a fact um, that they censored me was because it happened along the same time as a bunch of uh, censorship of January 6th posters and a bunch of people who even disagreed with those people, uh, but they're anarchist or libertarian in general, and uh, didn't quite toe the line hard enough. And I was one of those people who was an anti-Trumper who didn't fucking toe the line. Because <laughs> I'm anti-Trump for the wrong reasons, and it's not because I love Biden. So, just to be super clear... Um, you can still find me, and I'm not going to be shut up. But uh, now that I'm back, uh, some of you who stopped following any of my work uh, when I was banned, and I know that there are a significant amount of you because uh, you know I had 15,000 followers on my last account, and I only had, uh, at peak, like 3.9 thousand followers on the new one. So, clearly, there's some non-overlap there. So, you know, I just thought I'd bring that up when I brought up the fact that uh, now that I'm back on my big account, maybe some of you uh, w would be interested in some of the content I've been doing while Twitter banning me didn't censor me. And maybe you'd also be interested in the fact that uh, <clears throat> Twitter is actively supporting... Uh, revisionist war propaganda by making one of their editorialized and honestly like let me be super clear here if you're a platform uh and and not a publisher you can't decide certain narratives to publish and certain narratives to elevate and certain nar narratives to crush you have to be neutral um and twitter regularly isn't neutral. And in this particular case, they're trying for neutrality, but only by supporting the same outlet that they've loved for so long, Vox.com. Um, so Vox put out this piece, and their summary of it in their events section, where they're, uh, they constantly like illegally editorialize, their summary is, Who's to blame for Afghanistan's tragedy? The U.S. government, it seemed, had failed to anticipate how quickly the Taliban would overthrow the Afghan government and the undoing of the little progress made during the two decades of America's war. Two decades? What the fuck? <laughs> it has not been only two decades, you fucking liar. Um, maybe the official invasion of Afghanistan started about two decades ago, but you know what? U.S. has been there since Cyclone. U.S. has been there since they used it as a proxy war against Russia. Ha! Sounds fucking familiar. And yeah, fuck Russia. What they were doing to the Afghani people was unacceptable ethically. But you know what else is unacceptable? The U.S. coming in and arming very specific religious extremists so that a right-wing social order could be forced on the place. And laying the groundwork for not only every bit of terrorism to follow, 
starting the groundwork for the first ever suicide bombings in the area. You know, and a bunch of other shit. But, uh, creating the groundwork for the Bin Laden situation, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and the uh, Day of, of Reckoning, which was 9-11. And yes, very bad. Don't do that. But, you know, there's not even really much proof that it wasn't somehow insidey jobby. I just, you know, have a hard time believing with all the evidence that's constantly suppressed and all the people who are constantly censored uh, for having, you know, the audacity to say that maybe it's not, you know, a good idea to trust the U.S. government and their propaganda. Uh, you know, maybe those people had a point. Uh, like James Corbett, for instance, with his 9-11, a conspiracy theory video. I think that's very good, and you should check it out on Odyssey, and there will be a link in the description. You know, if you decide to. But, like, ultimately, it's not just that, right? It's not just that. What it also is, um, is the fact that... <laughs> The U.S. claimed that the only time the U.S. government started to back the government there uh, was when they started to invade and when they started to uh, lay the groundwork for installing their own puppet government. And now they don't have a U.S.-backed government. But that's a bullshit lie. They literally do. And the reason that they literally do um, should be clear to anyone who gives a fuck. Um, that reason is that um, <laughs> effectively uh, the U.S. not only created the initial terror organizations by giving them arms, funding, and training uh, that would splinter off to eventually rejoin and become the Taliban, but the U.S. created... Uh, the Taliban problem as it stands by, you know, fucking... <laughs> by by giving them tens of millions of dollars right before 9-11. And most people don't know about this, but it's fucking... You can Google this, I'm right. They gave, like, tens of millions of dollars to the fucking Taliban right before 9-11 in, like, 2000. And y y you know why? Oh, we want them to fight a war on drugs, too. Not like our war on drugs has been a racket used to, you know, isolate drug ownership and dealing in the hands of a very select few group of uh, U.S. Uh, supporting people or, you know, used as an excuse to over-police uh, neighborhoods, certain neighborhoods that uh, Biden was really, really responsible for. And not the, you know, not, not that it might make it easier to justify an invasion of a place, um, which wasn't even related to um, the attack, right? Where, where, where was Bin Laden all these years, and where did he end up when they totally killed him and then threw him into the ocean? Huh, I wonder. Was it Afghanistan or was it Pakistan? Huh. Abbottabad or Kabul? I wonder. We'll never know. You know, you can't look up this information. Uh, anyway, the point is uh, that their story is bullshit. Like, the whole story that the U.S. gave off is bullshit. And it's designed to support the war propaganda that the U.S. totally backed the right horse in Afghanistan... And it wasn't necessarily just for profit and power. You know, the whole the whole two-war thing that Scott Horton's excellent book, uh, Fool's Errand, was about, that was 100% on the up and up. And for democracy and freedom or something. Um, so Twitter says in their article... <laughs> um, well, they're, 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 sorry, reposting of an article, totally not theirs at this point, 
They're not editorializing, guys. Um, that would make them a publisher and not a platform, guys. Um, and that might be why they seek to ban people, because those people shouldn't be writers for their publishing site, guys. I I'm, I'm going to stop now. Uh, just... <laughs> now, a year to the, d to the day after the fall of the U.S.-backed government in Afghanistan... Just a year, guys. Uh, just a couple decades, you know, since they backed a government. It's not like they backed the Taliban before and that makes the Taliban also a U.S.-backed government. And it's not like they left a bunch of weapons in the territory to make sure that their government that they still back um, is still providing the same kind of false choice you get in the U.S. And it's just like, you know, hey, maybe... The U.S. backed both, and they're still getting their way, which is why nothing is being done in retaliation for the U.S. Um, totally promising to leave Afghanistan and totally leaving Afghanistan, but still being somehow able to kill the next leader of, Af uh, of Al-Qaeda. Not like they ran a really complex operation in Afghanistan and they never left, right? Hmm! It couldn't be that! So, um... my chest right so um jonathan geyer says guye i don't know how to pronounce that afghanistan didn't fall because of one or two tactical events it was the overall strategy that was faulty valley nasser okay so which one is it are you valley nasser or are you this guy whatever okay so it's another johns hopkins professor so clearly it's uh it's 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 a few steps away from being completely dismissed because like that John Hop Johns Hopkins professor who did that meta study he's uh he's he's totally not allowed and you know neither are the people who you know just ignore ignore anyway so um <laughs> I'm going to click this link here for y'all <laughs> Afghanistan didn't fail as though it's failed completely, just gone, uh, and it was totally on, you know, fantastic ground before the U.S. left. Because of one or two tactical events, it was the overall strategy that was faulty. So both Republicans and Democrats, Bush and Hillary Clinton, they're responsible. We have to take responsibility. But not Biden, right? You can't criticize current guy. Twitter, Twitter is so laughably biased, y'all. It's fucking hilarious. They're laughably biased. You can't criticize um, Biden, but you can criticize Bush and Hillary. Why, why, why Hillary uh, specifically um, and not Obama, who was the guy who gave her authorization for certain shit? Hmm? Huh? Why why do we not acknowledge the fact that blowback exists for once? Maybe the blowback has been happening for many fucking more decades than just Bush and Hillary Clinton and two decades where an American backed government is though that's fucking awesome by default and would be great if it was handled properly. Uh is somehow the extent of this problem. We have to take responsibility as a nation. Here's my responsibility. In high school was the last time I supported any of this. And, uh, and, and I was a big Bush fan in high school because I was fucking stupid and edgy. And I knew nothing of politics. So yeah, that's my responsibility. But then, when it came time to actually vote when I still believe that made a damn, um, I voted for Ron Paul because what he was saying about being against war made fucking sense. And I was following people like, you know, anti-war and, and yell and shit. And I was like real into some anti-war stuff, right? Um, that's my responsibility. I When I actually grew some brain cells and you know, reached the age of consent, 
uh, I started to realize that I was fucking stupid in high school. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not responsible for this invasion. I didn't do that shit. I specifically told my family, because I was starting to think a little bit more clearly, that I didn't want to join the military when I was 18. I'm not responsible for this. We don't have to take responsibility as a nation, you fucking ghoul. What the fuck is that? No. And, and okay, so are you taking responsibility then, or is it just the rest of the nation? John? Or Valley? <laughs> right? This story has prompted a lot of reader emails. Everyone seems to have differing opinions on who's to blame. I don't purport to have definitive answers, but the disasters of last year's withdrawal from Afghanistan expose systemic failures, and no one's been held accountable. Oh? So, who do you want to be held accountable for this, then, hmm? And what should have been done? Should the U.S. have stayed in? Maybe don't write a stab-in-the-dark piece like this, lashing out and saying, blame the whole fucking nation, and then say, you don't have the answers. If you don't know why you should blame people and how things should be addressed, then don't say that you should blame people, you fucking hack. Holy shit. This is like, this is the exact problem with centrism because you end up with all this garbage where people are saying like, well, yeah, both sides, but not me though. And also everybody else, but not me. I'm awesome because I have the right opinions. So if you're looking for people to blame, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's table that for a moment and I will get back to it later. We'll put a pin in it. But basically, uh, the article goes on to say, uh, according to the Twitter editorialism, a year to the day after the fall of the U.S.-backed government in Afghanistan, there's been no accountability or reckoning. And while the U.S. troops have left Afghanistan, fucking citation needed! How did they know where the guy was? And how did they kill him if they've left? Maybe they haven't, and maybe... They don't, and maybe it's too profitable to leave? Hmm. Hmm. Did somebody write articles saying better shit than these people's? Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to find that guy. Who's to blame for Afghanistan's tragedy? Everyone argues Mideast ex Midwest. The <laughs> The cascade of blunders and the absence of accountability during America's withdrawal from Afghanistan have repeated the same systemic failures. It's two decades invasion and occupation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Our abandonment of those we promised to take care of is a moral stain on this administration. Ryan Crocker, a career ambassador who served twice in Afghanistan, told Vox, Maybe you shouldn't have made that fucking promise and you should stop being interventionist so that you have footholds in the Middle East. Maybe you should stop making these promises so that you can fight proxy wars against Russia and maybe one of the guys who participated in that is more to blame than Becky down the street. Huh? Is that possible? Is it possible that it's not everyone's fault and that more specific blame could be assigned? Fucking guess not, because a year to go to the day after the fall of the U.S.-backed government in Afghanistan, it's unclear who, if anyone, has been held accountable. And you guys certainly didn't help in holding anyone accountable, did ya? So let's read your article a little, huh? Shall we? <laughs> Oh, man. A cost-free exit from Afghanistan may have never been possible. You think? The war itself has been a debacle for two decades. More like 50 fucking years, but go on. And the U.S. had very much failed. 
No, they got what they wanted. <laughs> they got lithium, opium, gemstones, oil, other metals, fucking lots of shit. And they got to install a government and fight back Russia because proxy wars with Russia kept the CIA involved in foreign policy when they would have been a ghost. Zbigniew Brzezinski over there pointing at him and saying, Hey, get him! They, I, they, this is your land. The land to the north is yours. That wasn't two decades ago, shit. Anyway. Days... <laughs> Days after Afghanistan's fall to the Taliban in August 2021, as though the Taliban wasn't there for a fucking long time, and as though we're just supposed to forget the fact that the U.S. government literally funded them tens of billions, or fucking millions, something. It was fucking a lot of money that they gave these people, and why? So that they could criminalize opium, and then suddenly they criminalized opium. And then suddenly they had a bunch of opium on hand that they totally promised they weren't going to traffic themselves. And then they trafficked it themselves and there were fuck tons of exports. And now, after all of that help the US government gave to the Taliban, the Taliban that wouldn't exist without existing US government help, after all of that fucking shit, suddenly... The Taliban gets a bunch of military hardware and bases from alleged abandonment from a U.S. government that failed. No! They got exactly what they fucking wanted! Eventually, after a certain amount of the same mistake being made, maybe they fucking meant it! Just, uh, I'm, I'm just shouting a little. Uh, we do a little shouting around here. Anyway, fucking <laughs> President Joe Biden had made a politically brave decision, the official said, but the policy plans were not there to back it up. There's blame to go around, they told me, speaking on the condition of anonymity. I don't know why we have to wait until something is a total crisis in order for people to act with the kind of energy that we should have been starting in April. When Biden first announced all U.S. troops would be out of Afghanistan by September. <gasps> Do you mean all Afghanistan uh, troops will be out by September, including the ones that are drone bombing people still? Or shucks by golly gee, is there going to be more? Because I mean, there still is though. How much more? Did somebody write an article about this? Gosh darn it. It's almost like the things that I've been saying have been right. And people have been calling me insane and or unhinged and or whatever. I don't exactly do a bunch to get that image and stigma away from me. But like, let's be clear. I was fucking right. And these people would rather you just say the massive successful airlift of more than 120,000 Americans and Afghan partners only came after the bottleneck of the Kabul airport, a chaotic scene that created the conditions for the terrorist group ISIS-K airport bombing on August 26, 2021, killing 170 Afghan and 13 U.S. service members. Later that week, a U.S. drone strike killed 10 Afghans because they didn't Fucking leave! Because I was already right, and because I've been proven more right lately. Isn't it fucking nice to be acknowledged in the same way that Vox is when I'm proven right and they just want to think they're right? Or at least get paid like they're right. Feel free to donate if you want to support the content. Links in description. But, like, yeah, no. Fuck that. <laughs> the U.S. government, it seemed, had failed to anticipate how quickly the Taliban would overthrow the Afghan. Yeah, they just did a whoopsie. They did a fucky wucky by the government that they had repeatedly funded 
and who was started by splinter groups of organizations that they repeatedly funded, armed, and trained, and supported with, like, Bin La- Oh, sorry, uh, fucking Tim Osmond's camp in Coast, uh, where he started his base of operations doing a bunch of shit that the U.S. was like, yeah, we could totally just blame him if anything comes up. Because it's totally him. It's sort of like when, you know, the proxy war in Ukraine was starting. And they were like, you know, hey, we got to bury this story about U.S.-funded biolabs over there. So we'll just say that if anything happens, it was Russia. We're not living in a dystopian fascist dictatorship! Anyway. <laughs> just to, just to, just to get back on track here. Um... Gotta, gotta calm down a little, you know? And the undoing of the little progress made during the two decades of America's war. Are you sure that progress is what was wanted? And not just a resource mine? And strategic positioning in that region? And fucking with Russia? Hmm? Darn. Those questions won't get answered. Somebody should email this video to Vox. Anyway, uh, just to be super clear, um, I'm going to try to read more without interruption. At minimum, the administration should have started looking around and saying, well, who's responsible for this, said Bruce Rydell, a former CIA official who had advised U.S. presidents. Is it Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor? Is it the Secretary of Defense? Who was responsible for this mess? And yet there was no accountability at all. That produces a culture in which poor ideas are allowed to circulate. Poor ideas like Cyclone CIA cuck? Huh? Poor ideas like everything the CIA does? At least from a perspective of, like, mm, helping the people and working for them and not the moneyed interests of those in power? Hmm, I wonder what you could mean by that! Now a year to the day after the fall of the U.S.-backed government in Afghanistan, it's unclear who, if anyone, has been held accountable. There was a bureaucratic failure and a strategic failure. Trump had pledged to draw down U.S. forces to zero in Afghanistan with a May 1st, 2021 timeline, but his team had not created a plan for it. Oh, shucks, oh golly gee. The team that was oustered didn't create a plan. Oh, shucks. Uh, anyway. <laughs> As a president, he had hollowed out the State Department and left Biden to rebuild the visa program. <sighs> Yeah, shucks. If only Biden would have uh, rebuilt some of the stuff Trump destroyed, like the drone reporting mandate. Oh, wait! We're just ha supposed to have some sympathy for Biden here. We're not supposed to criticize the fact that Biden didn't do jack fucking shit right from the perspective of helping the common person. We're just supposed to bite this bullet and say, Yeah! This is a good article! I believe you! Um, so, let me just get back on track. <laughs> so it was a failure of White House coordination of urgency on the State Department's part to get Afghanistan partners out of the Defense Department and intelligence agencies and military contractors and regional powers like Pakistan. And of course, Afghanistan's own government. Yeah, regional powers like Pakistan. Almost like that's what Afghanistan was, too. It was a regional power. And the U.S. government got exactly what they wanted, just like they get exactly what they wanted from places like Pakistan and Israel. And now, smash music plays. Ukraine joins the fight. Now I'm just being a cynical asshole. Don't listen to me. Um, anyway, this is a bad article. Biden took responsibility, but nobody was held accountable. That's how this works. So, I'm not going to tell you, you know, to go harass this person. I don't want you to. 
Maybe email Vice though, because or Vox, because clearly I would be better at actually understanding these issues than this guy. And maybe I'll respond to the rest of the article at some point, but this is already 30 minutes as of exactly now, so I'm not going to continue. But what I will say is that I was fucking right. I was fucking right. I was right. And, and everybody who doesn't like this or who didn't like it at the time or who unfollowed me or talked shit can eat shit. I was right. And I will be right, especially since all this rhetoric does is bang the drums for people to get back into Afghanistan. Because guess what? If the government is unstable because of a lack of U.S. involvement, allegedly, if you don't understand the history of it, which, hey, I was right about that, too. Uh, if you don't understand any of this, um, yeah, you might think that the U.S., uh, just, you know, doesn't have a government there anymore. And, you know, there's no reason that they left the bases and equipment and weapons or anything like that or did the withdrawal so quickly. It's not like they made an agreement with anybody. Couldn't be. Not that that's going to be declassified in 20 years. So let's be super fucking clear here and say that if you believe that the U.S. government had a vacuum created uh, by leaving, which I don't, um... You still gotta understand that I was right about both of these things. Both of these things that have constantly caught me flack. All of the links to everything that I uh, read on camera here will be in the description. But I just wanted to let y'all know that. Because I've been here this whole time, even though I've been banned from Twitter, and maybe some of you people who followed me on Insanity is free, and then, you know, didn't on my other account, uh, maybe some of you can see this and uh, subscribe and uh, share some of this content instead of things like Vox and instead of all these uh, obvious propaganda pieces because my content is proven right years later. That's what the truth is. And it will continue to be proven right years later. It will always have that effect because ultimately, guess what? If you follow the facts closely enough, it becomes a whole lot easier to understand the mechanisms. Mechanisms most people don't even want to look at. And looking at those mechanisms and understanding them is why truth is a vital service and why people should really start to support those who they think tell it best. Because if you don't, the only thing you'll have is a sea of voxes and vices and viacoms. And maybe that's a fucking bad thing. Because maybe... Not understanding the fullness of the problem and minimizing the scope as much as possible so that your sources seem like the good guys and so that you can make narratives like this has been going on for two decades instead of basically half a century. Maybe that's a fucking bad thing and it shouldn't be fucking happening. And maybe it results in more death, more destruction, and less liberty for everybody on the fucking planet. And maybe that's the reason we need to smash the fucking state.